please welcome the officials for this evening's match. The referee is Brandon Gardner. He is assisted on the lines by Hisham Elbariki and Tyler Fraley. The fourth official is William Ordonez Rojas. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. It's a chilly evening in Matthews, North Carolina as Stumptown AC looks to remain hot in its home opener with a third win on the spin. Good evening and welcome to the Sportsplex at Matthews for Nisa Soccer on My Cujo TV. I'm Sam Goldfarb here with Robert Morrison and Danny Trevor on the line for tonight's matchup between Stumptown AC and the Los Angeles Force. Stumptown is, has won two on the spin, including their opener in the Nisa spring season, an impressive 2-1 victory over Maryland Bobcats FC. And Robert, what were your thoughts on that win for the home side today? Yeah, I think the word that I would use is opportunistic. Uh, they took advantage of some opportunities that Maryland gave them, and both of the goals that uh, that Stumptown scored were uh, taking advantage of, of at advantage of mistakes that they had and um, really uh, scored some excellent goals in both cases uh, to take that 2-1 victory uh, on Saturday. Absolutely, and the player to watch tonight, one of the goal scorers in that match from Saturday, Alex McGrath, the birthday boy. Um, what do you think he has to do today to really power this Stumptown side to another win? Yeah, well, hopefully that birthday power will get him right through uh, to play well tonight. Um, so happy birthday to Alex. But uh, I think the big thing is he is going to be uh, moving the team from, from defense to offense in that midfield position um, to the two uh, forwards up top. And it's going to be really key for him to, uh, to be able to, to have possession of the ball and get it forward and, and take those opportunities as, as they present themselves. So we talked about Stumptown's form entering their first home game ever, but the visiting LA Force, they've kind of been going in the opposite direction at the moment. They've dropped three of their first four. They haven't scored since April 19th, and they lost 1-0 on Friday to 1904 FC. But the defense has also been a big issue, Robert, so much so that they've tweaked their formation tonight. Yeah, um, from the looks of it, they are pretty defensive uh, in their lineup. Uh, we'll be able to see a little better um, once the, the teams are out on the field what that actually looks like. Uh, but it looks like five at the back, um, maybe trying to, to stop the, the nine-goal spread they've had over four games uh, so far. Um, they, the, the game on Friday is the first time they've given up uh, less than two goals in a game. So probably looking to, to stop that and hopefully to take advantage of, of counterattacking opportunities as opposed to, uh, to pushing the ball forward in other situations. Absolutely. Both sides rocking with wing backs, but it seems Stumptown's more three at the back, and that segues us into our lineups for tonight. Kevin Gonzalez. 
Gonzalez making his fifth start of the year in goal for Stumptown. Frankie Martinez and Reese Williams are the wingbacks. Robert Hines, Giovanni Bejarano, and Jacob Krim at the center back spots. Travis Ward, who had a goal and an assist on, on Saturday. Alex McGrath and Luis Garcia Sosa in the center. Agui Chunga and Molly Carpe Jr. up top. Meanwhile, for LA, the 5 4 1 is what it looks like. Hugo Gomez in goal making his fourth start. Alex Cowell, Kavian Kashani, Juan Pablo Oseguera, Seamus McLaughlin, Julio Rubio at the back. The wings, Edson Alvarado and Diego Barrera. The center, Abraham Vion, Di Maria Alawine, and Christian Cheney up top, replacing the longtime striker, at least long time for the force, <laughs> in Chandler Hoffman, who's injured. Yep, three of their full, four goals so far. So uh, see how this goes. We're about to get started here, folks. And the kickoff. And we are underway here at the Sportsplex at Matthews LA Force in white. Meanwhile, in your blue and white trim is your home Stumptown side. Right now, the Force, it looks like they have three with two wing backs, so we will see them trying to be flexible in that formation today, Robert. Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely you're, you're seeing uh, that defensive side uh, come out with that, so we'll see what, what they do with that. Throw down the line. Hines gets in the way of it, looking for Chunga. And now spraying away comes Ward. Williams scored a goal in the Legends Cup, I believe, against Cal United strikers. Only one out of defense for Stumptown thus far this year. There's Kashani. Finds Diego Barrera. Barrera's brother playing in the USL Championship for Hartford Athletic, a very soccer-oriented Colombian-American family. And Stumptown looking to play out the back at the moment. Bit of pressure and now intercepted from Rubio. McLaughlin playing at left back today. We usually are used to seeing him at, at center back, normally maybe right center back, but instead in the left spot today. And now Barrera for Kashani. Quick link. And Kashani offside. Robert, LA controlling the tempo here early. Yeah, that's that's interesting uh, that we, we talked to that about them not uh, pressing and maybe letting the, the game come to them, but they seem to so far be working the opposite, um, trying to, to, to push forward and see if they can get some uh, an early goal. And maybe that's the strategy, right? If they score early, then maybe they don't have to worry so much about about whether or not they're going to be able to to, uh, to keep the, the defense moving. So we'll see how that goes. Ab course, absolutely. Stumptown just has to be careful not to get caught out early as they look for Carpe down the line and a quick interception from Alawine. Now Alvarado, he was substituted on for the final 28 minutes on Friday night, getting a start here this evening. Colwell cuts it out, and out wide to Kashani, playing the right wing back role today. Now Ward. Of course, Stumptown fresh off of their first Nisa spring season victory as Alvarado charges down the right flank. And Williams intercepts. But Stumptown winning that one 2 1 at Maryland Bobcats FC. They scored the opening two goals. And we talked about McGrath actually in the open as Alawine bundled over aggressively by Chunga here on the near side. We talked about McGrath and scored an absolute screamer, uh, Robert. Yeah, absolutely. It was really impressive. And again, we talked about it at the beginning, uh, just taking advantage of the opportunities. The, the ball was kind of flying around uh, near the near the penalty box and fell to him and he took a nice shot and, and put it up in the top right hand corner of the, nothing the goalkeeper could do about it at all. And also Travis Ward who assisted that scored the second. It was another really impressive finish just from the left side just slotted it into the top right corner. Yeah, curled it across. Good effort from nothing the goalkeeper could do about that either. So. Kashani looking back there for Rubio, but they say he took it too quickly. An interesting alteration here. Uh, Oseguera in the right center back role, usually, pl usually playing in the heart of that defense, they move Colwell into the center. And one thing about the three, five at the back type formations is it's very flexible, Robert. 
Yeah, it allows your uh, defenders to move, but also allows for motion on the wings there. So if you want to get your uh, your wing backs or your full backs involved in the offense, you can. Um, but also, uh, depending on what the situation is, they might come. They they'll be able to cover defensively as well. But as we can see here, a lot of movement. Uh, from their wing back so far along this right hand side. Yeah, Kashani's been very involved in the attack thus far for the force. And Kashani did not start last game, uh, not a frequent feature for this force side. As that one intercepted by Rubio and Chunga catches it from the back. That's the second time uh, he's done that and he picks up yeah, an early yellow. I was going to say that seemed like that was coming. Uh, forward fouls, I believe, uh, is what they refer to those as. Um, you know, the offensive player trying to play defense often gets them in trouble. So the fifth minute, first card of the game. The Force had quite a wild um, affair, we should say, on Friday night. Even though it was a 1-0, their star striker um, in Cristian Gordillo Moreno, the 31-year-old, picked up two yellows. So after they concede that first goal, they're kind of forced to play from behind, both on the scoreboard and in a man personnel situation. As that ball chipped into the area, Carpe will clear only as far as Rubio. Yeah, played the last 15 minutes of the game without uh, an 11th player, which can make it difficult if you're coming back, even from a 1-0 deficit for sure. And Robert, what do you think the force has to do? Do you think this is a strategy they're employing where they're just almost going to defend by applying constant pressure? What do they do when Stumptown builds their way into this and starts to create more pressure on their goal? Yeah, that'll be the, the interesting thing to see. Um, Stumptown has not really shown a lot of possession so far, which is going to be a problem if, if uh, LA is going to be able to, to hang on to the ball like this and really move forward. Um, and if they're they're going to spend this much time in their own zone, that's that's going to be a real problem and something Stumptown's going to be worried about uh, through kick. the rest of the match. The free kick taken by Bejarano is Aaron and Rubio intercepts. So speaking of possession, just when they're winning it back, constantly just being really having problems playing out of the back. And now Kashani looking inside. Williams covers well, and Martinez plays out to Chunga. Yeah, here's, here's an example of exactly what we're talking about right here. They're not able to get it out from the back, so they may have to rethink the strategy of playing it that way, see if they can get some long balls down the, down the pitch a little bit um, to relieve some pressure. Really quick interplay there as Cheney can't quite find the ball back to Rubio. And now Garcia Sosa looking to play out of trouble for Stumptown, intercepted once again by Rubio, who's absolutely all over the shop here in the opening 10 minutes. Barrera. Stumptown playing a side that looks very well drilled. Um, and when you look at the records and you look at the fact that there's been a lot of problems for the force on the scoreboard and they've only scored four goals all year and three of them came from Hoffman, you'd expect maybe things to be a bit choppier. But no, Robert, they've had their way here to start things off. Yeah, absolutely. The first you know eight minutes or so have been pretty much all played on this side of the pitch. Um, not a, a good strategy for victory, if you ask me. Uh, so hopefully Stubtown can figure out how to get that out of here. Ferreira was on the edge of the area, and the ball was just sprayed a bit long for Kashani. Another decent spell of attacking play from the force. Already seeing some frustration from the Stumptown players in, in terms of the ability to keep it under control. Um, it'll be interesting to see if that continues. And it's been especially prevalent here on this near side. We've talked about Kashani being involved on both ends, but also Barrera, just as we're seeing there, getting in the way of Martinez quite well. And Robert, when you're under this much pressure, and we don't want to belabor this too much, but <laughs> when you have so many white shirts on you, what do you do if you're stumped on? How do you navigate your way out of this uh, these this trouble? Is it all short balls and you just hope that you find something down the line? Or do you just boot it like Stumptown's doing at the moment? I mean, yeah, eventually you're going to have to get to a point where you can maintain possession. I think that's been the real problem is they're, even when they're getting the ball, they're giving it away almost immediately, whether or not that be through an interception or um, the 
the, the shroud of white shirts around them is, is also a problem. So they're going to have to be really careful when the opportunities come. It's very interesting. This has been kind of the opposite of what we have expected from both sides so far, um, about nine minutes or ten minutes or so into the game. Yeah, as we were talking about, Rubio, the Rubio to Cheney with Vion and uh, Kashani over there, that interplay down the left flank has been pretty dangerous for the force. As they spray one out wide once again, Kashani on the right. Cross drilled in, can't quite trouble Gonzalez, and out for a goal kick. And that's two uh, quick uh, crosses into the, the goal area. Um, uh, you got to be a little nervous if you're stumped town about these, these shots getting in. Um, there's just a lot of pressure so far. Um, if you're if you're the coaching staff, you got to be be worried about all of this. So here's an opportunity. It looks like they're gonna try to press up a little bit further uh, down the field and see if they can get it in their own area, trouble the goalkeeper a little bit. And one point as well that we haven't really hit as much as it takes a lot of energy if you're the force to press this much consistently, Robert. Like this this isn't a situation where you can do this a full ninety without strategically taking up kind of time off and that doesn't mean that for 45 minutes you're taking a break but in spurts you can't be applying constant pressure yeah so uh, again uh, you have to wonder if the strategy is let's try to 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 be on the front foot for as long as as, as quickly as possible and maybe uh, you know nick a goal here in the first 20 15 20 minutes or so that way you're you're then forcing Stumptown to play from behind uh which would put the force in a much better position uh, than they've been so far this season. Barrera drew bodies over to the left and sprayed over to Kashani on the right. Now Alvarado looking for Barrera and back to Rubio. Controlled buildup once again from the visitors. Barrera dinking it and it finds its way into the back of the net. We can't tell exactly if Cheney got a touch to it but Dan Diego Barrera orchestrated it. The Los Angeles force after 11 minutes get the opening goal and the pressure pays off robert yeah and you'll see here on the replay um all the pressure this is a good a good swing out to the to the left hand side and then the thing is if you get the ball in the box crazy things can happen and that's exactly what took place here and a nice little pass there and then right there um the shot goes in it's not <laughs> not the prettiest thing in the world but uh it still counts as far as i can tell you see the brilliant control there from Barrera, and it does look like Cheney might have gotten a boot to it at the end. So we're going to credit it to Cheney. That would be his first goal with the force, the fifth this year in five games for the visiting side. Yeah, and that's what we're what you're worried about if you're uh, uh, on the Stumptown side is um, what what happened there, and they were able to get that goal in, in very quickly. Now this changes. Uh, the, the way that, that the force can play for the rest of the matchup. They can still press if they need to, but they can also um, invite a little pressure and because and, it's on Stumptown now to make something happen. Here is Travis Ward. Had a goal and an assist Wednesday night. Now Williams. Now Stumptown orchestrating potentially their best fella possession of the match. But dribbled briefly out of trouble from Alawine. Now Carpe getting one of his first touches of the night. Ward, low driver, no issues there for Hugo Gomez. Booted long, looking for Cheney, the goal scorer. It's gonna be ushered back to Gonzalez. Yeah, and that's better from Stumptown. We finally, finally see the ball on their side of the, of the field, and it's good to see that they're able to, to force at least a shot on goal, although it didn't have a lot of uh, a lot of power behind it and didn't really trouble the goalkeeper as you mentioned but it's a start and, and you got to start somewhere and that's a good place to be and two names we have not called much tonight one of them was involved in it travis ward number 11 had a goal and an assist we mentioned friday night we haven't quite called mcgrath's name too much he's playing kind of in that right center mid role but he hasn't touched it much as now we see him carrying it forward yeah and again as i mentioned at the beginning it looks like he's definitely that that sort of uh, go between uh, between the defense and the and the the attack up front, but they've they've been keying on him so far, and he hasn't really touched the ball so much. 
Absolutely, and you saw him maybe just dropping further back to kind of kickstart an attack as that ball finds its way through to Chunga, but the offside flag is up on the far side. That's an unfortunate <laughs> offside there. The ball deflecting off in, in a funny direction. He probably would have been fine if there wasn't a deflection there, but as it turns out, offside. So in the first 15 minutes, a very intriguing start. Obviously, you have the goal, but the implications go beyond the scoreboard. We talk about it adds more flexibility to the game that the force can play. Um, you see, maybe they're dropping off a little more. It's letting Stumptown grow to it, but they don't burn that much energy because they only had to press aggressively for those first 11 minutes. Yeah, if that had gone on for too long, it would have been interesting to see if they had changed things up. But because they scored so quickly, uh, they generated an opportunity to, to now be able to dictate the game. And it's, it's, the onus is kind of on Stumptown to take advantage of, of the opportunity that, that, I'll, that they'll have here. Absolutely. If you're just tuning in, welcome to Stumptown AC and the Los Angeles Force, the NISA, National Independent Soccer Association, on MyCujo TV. Of course, the Force scoring in the 12th minute. It was Christian Chaney, the new signing up front, meant to replace the injured Chandler Hoffman and doing his best Hoffman impression 12 minutes into his Force debut. Of course, Stumptown, a new club, uh, formerly Stumptown Athletic. It's been a long ride to get to this inaugural home opener for the home side. Of course, under uh, previous ownership at Stumptown Athletic, they played um, a couple seasons. They opted out of the fall 2020 campaign and now totally rebranded a whole new club with a whole new identity and opening their season quite respectably two one and one went one one and one in the legends cup to open the spring campaign and then picked up their first three points of the year on friday on saturday night so a club's been through a lot but it's starting to pay off and of course management really starting to see a return on its investment here in the early going yeah and i think the big thing that they've done so far is is kept uh, their defensive shape in intact i think that's been a big thing for them so far um on this young season um but it seems like the Force have an interesting theory about how to deal with that, and so far it's worked uh, to the tune of 1-0 uh, through the first uh, 17 minutes of this match. And here is McGrath, a big attacking piece normally, played the number 10 on Saturday, had the st astonishing volley goal. He's really been out of the action, at least in the attacking third. As that ball sprayed long for Williams, the flag stays down. Phenomenal challenge by Kashani. The wingbacks all over the shop here in the first 20. And fouled by McGrath, much to the chagrin of the Stumptown supporters here in attendance at the, com the, the sports co complex at Matthews. Yeah, you're talking about McGrath. He, he definitely seems to be uh, playing a little bit uh, deeper in the defensive side of things so far, um, whereas Travis Ward seems to be more uh, forward in that midfield section. It's kind of interesting. I wonder if there's a sort of interchangeability, so to speak, between those two players uh, in the mind of the coaching staff um, and allowing both of those, those guys to get forward. Yeah, and I think we see McGrath dropping a little further back, largely just because he hasn't been able to claim it much up front. But you sacrifice a lot with that, right? You sacrifice a lot in the final third because McGrath isn't able to touch it there right. and just have, have him act as more of somebody pulling the strings. So maybe they hope he's going to initiate attacks more than finish them tonight. As there is a player down here on the far side. Looks to be Robert Hines. And yeah, he went high up in the air to go attack that ball. Looks like he's a little worse for the wear. Hopefully he'll be good. And he looks a bit banged up, trying to get back to his feet and does. And we look set to resume play here at the Sportsplex at Matthews. through Krim. And of course, Stumptown, we talk about their defensive shape, and a big part of that is uh, Frankie Martinez uh, playing the outside center back role today. Martinez actually a former draft pick in the MLS 
uh, played for Sporting Kansas City, the 69th overall pick in the third round of the 2019 draft. So you see a lot of uh, high-tier professional experience here for Stumptown in its first season in the National Independent Soccer Association. Yeah, not, and and not the only uh, the player, not the only player at all. Uh, Robert Hines played for uh, Oakland Roots SC uh, for a couple of seasons. Um, have some some good uh, some players who've been with other teams, uh, both in NISA and in other uh, leagues. So definitely build some some youth. They're a, a significantly younger team uh, than the Force are, uh, but there's also some some experience there as well. Here's Williams charging down the left side and now played back to Garcia Sosa. Garcia Sosa leading this Stumptown side in assists. He finished the Legends Cups with assists in back-to-back -back matches against Cal United Strikers FC and New Amsterdam FC in that Stumptown victory. As Chunga bundled over near the penalty area and an enticing free kick opportunity as the yellow is assessed to the debutante, Alex Colwell. Perhaps Stumptown's best attacking opportunity of the match. They've slowly grown into it since the goal. They were really out of the first 12 minutes and since have generated a bit of intriguing possession going forward. Now a big chance. Garcia Sosa and Ward standing over it at the moment. Feels like a left footer to me from the position, but it'll be interesting to see what the, the plan is here. There's not a lot of people in the box to receive the the free kick which is interesting Ward drives it with his left just as you predicted Robert and it's right at Hugo Gomez but first shot on target for Stumptown a good look but just swerved right at Gomez yeah, I wonder if they didn't give away too much by the the light uh, amount of players that they had in the box there that that was coming directly at at the goalkeeper and I think the objective had to be to try to curl that into the top right, but maybe didn't get enough, like, whip or yeah, power absolutely. on it. Yeah, that would have been uh, a lot like what he did for his goal on Saturday. Kind of find it from almost from the same position, just a little bit close, a little further out. Martinez. Ball over to Williams. Some cries for handball. Instead plays back to Gonzalez. Intercepted. Here is Alawine. The goal scorer, Cheney, battling for it. He's got three blue shirts surrounding him, and finally Williams comes out with it here on the near side. Intercepted though by Cheney. Chung has got to be careful there. Already on a yellow, he can't be <laughs> throwing people around. Wouldn't be the first striker we've seen be sent off from either of those teams this week. <laughs> this is true. And now Colwell has a yellow to his name as well for the force. Vion on the far side. And you're seeing LA maybe seizing a bit more control as it's intercepted now. Garcia Sosa maneuvering through traffic and now back to Hines who looks no worse for wear after the knock earlier. And now Martinez. Stumptown just looking to break down this formidable force organization at the moment. Yeah, we talked a lot about their defensive problems coming into this game, but so far they've, they've held their shape and are, are keeping Stumptown out of their own end. And the thing we I've been most impressive by, impressed by, Robert, is the fact that after they kind of laid off the press a little more, they've still managed to keep Stumptown out. The most enticing opportunity was from a set piece and really didn't trouble Gomez at all. So even when Stumptown has organized spells of possession in the attacking half, it hasn't been too much of an issue for the force back line. And that's something as well that Coach... Tales Peterson's going to be thrilled to see. Yeah, absolutely. And it, 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 dumps, it definitely seems to be a concerted effort to turn that pressure on and off as needed at this point, especially because they got that early goal. Um, they're able to jump in and, and, and turn that pressure on as needed. 
And now Barrera, he's flopped flanks after starting on the right. Here come the force once again down the far side. Vion evading the pressure from Bejarano. And now in towards Cheney. It's good, good decisive goalkeeping there. I like to see him jump out there and, and make the play. And a great punch there from Gonzalez. Ball rolls out of play though and the force will reset. 25 minutes in the books. The Los Angeles force leading 1-0. The goal from Christian Cheney in the 12th minute. Barrera controlled it on the far side, and then Cheney tapped in a, the little dinked ball after Gonzalez it, uh, couldn't quite claim it. And Stumptown's been playing from behind ever since. Martinez finding Carpe, who's been pushed a little out wider than he would probably like. He's the, kind of the loneliest guy in the stadium so far. He has not had a lot to do um, you know, at this point, the 25 minute mark. Um, that will be something that Stumptown will need to change if they want to get on the scoreboard. And Carpe with some Nisa experience. He played for Atlanta United SC and had um, one goal in four apps. But this year has struggled a bit to find his footing. This is his fifth start. He's played and started every match, but he has not had a shot all year. Yeah, that seems to be a problem, although although the, the thing to pay attention to is that a lot of uh, Stumptown's opportunities have, have come from the midfield. Um, so uh, whether or not that's a, 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 a planned effort if the, or if it's something that they want to work the striker in, um, I think having the two strikers up top today certainly suggests that they'd like to see more from, from those goal scorers up top. Ball rolls out of play, and the force looking to reset once again. Looking long for Cheney, and he does get on the end of it at the moment. Martinez trying to get in the middle, and a great defending there from Krim on his way backwards to knock that one free. He yeah, got a little spun around there, but he did a, a great job to recover and a and, uh, little help from his, uh, from his buddies in the back line to, to get the, the weak shot. You're seeing Cheney... It's really fit in despite this being one of his first appearances with the force of course navigating that one-on-one -on -one pressure well before of course running into two blue shirts he had his the goal to his name he's given this stumptown backline problems despite really not having as much time to build chemistry with the squad now mcgrath in attacking positioning back to carpe another interception from barrera a lot of giveaways and errant passes so far from Stumptown and when they've had opportunities to, to do something with the ball and you got to be concerned about that if you're the coaching staff and make sure everybody's on the same page. Obviously it's still early in the season but that's something you want to be paying attention to as the game goes on. Yeah, and Coach Rod Underwood also looking to organize this Stumptown side. This is his first season with the club, and he's coached all over the place. Coached with Montego Bay FC in Jamaica. Very experienced and a good asset, but this is new to him too. This team's only been together about a month and a half, so they're building as they go as well, as that's a really aggressive studs-up challenge on the far side. Yeah. And for his efforts, it looks like Ward might earn a yellow. Yeah, he did. Home. Seamus McLaughlin gets up and looks no worse for wear, but really scary moment there after the challenge from Ward. He goes in the book, and he's the second Stumptown player with a yellow here in the first half. And it's bad timing there. Doesn't didn't look like anything malicious about that by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, nicked the ball a little bit maybe, but definitely got a lot of McLaughlin. Absolutely. McLaughlin launches that one towards Barrera. Ward pressuring. Doesn't seem intimidated by the presence of a yellow and now intercepts, gives it to Chunga. Searching for Garcia Sosa, can't quite find his feet. And Kashani, who we haven't seen as much of in the last 10 minutes, gets a touch to it. Yeah, it looks like the force have uh, switched sides a little bit in terms of the, the focus. They were really heavy on this right-hand side, uh, the side closest to us uh, for the first uh, you know, 10, 12 minutes, 15 minutes till the goal was scored. Um, 
let off a little bit, and now they've moved to the other side. You know, got to keep Stumptown on their toes, I suppose. So that makes sense as a strategy, I think. Absolutely. And we talk about the chess match with the side they're attacking, but there's also the chess match with the pressing. We talked about how they were really hard the first 10, 15 minutes. After the goal, they sank off a little more, and they'll intermittently throw that at that Stumptown backline. So those defenders really never know what they're going to get. Yeah, and you're seeing that uh, from the Stumptown players, too. They don't seem to know when the pressure's coming or where the pressure's going to come from, and that probably has a lot to do with some of the, the choices in terms of, uh, you know, the passes and, and the, iner the inerrant passes that they're making in, in some cases um, and not being able to hold onto the ball very effectively, uh, quite frankly. Almost losing it on the throw in there as Bejarano manages to evade Barrera. Now Carpe. Stumptown potentially in business here on the far side. And we'll maintain it. The ball's knocked out near Carpe. Looking for Carpe and Hines will manage to retain possession for the home side. Now McGrath. Maybe looking to engineer something on his own here. Little two-man game and qu can't quite find Williams, but it's going to stay with Stumptown here on the left flank. This, the spacing seems to be a little of a concern in some of these places. They're getting really close together, which is making the press a little bit easier for, for L.A. Um, I don't think you want to offer, give them that opportunity as, uh, uh, in those cases. Stumptown looking to build from the back once again. A more extended spell of possession, something home fans will like to see. If you're just tuning in, welcome to Nisa Soccer on My Cujo TV. I'm Sam Goldfarb here with Robert Morrison. We're going to hand it over to Danny Trevor in a moment. It's a special broadcast. If you're a Stumptown fan tuning in, make sure you vote on the Twitter poll. We are uh, having a little commentator contest to see uh, who the fans prefer most, I guess. Um, <laughs> and we're going to let our man Danny take over for me in a moment. Uh, but I remind you, if, if you like you want to see more of me, feel free to vote for me. I'm not going to complain about that. Um, <laughs> All right, thanks, uh, Sam. That was enjoyable. We'll go ahead and take over the the play-by-play -play here as Danny gets settled. Oh, got a foul in the middle of the park. Trying to see who that is that just went down. It's the foul on Abraham Vion. No easy way to do that transition. <laughs> Not at all, well Danny. Welcome. Well done. To, welcome to the uh, <laughs> to the broadcast. Thank you. Thank you. I was getting a little cold sitting over there. I'm <laughs> glad to uh, finally start talking. Absolutely. Uh, so, Danny, what are you seeing so far from, from the, the matchup as we kind of, you know, give you a nice softy to, to get started with? Well, you know what? If you remember back to their first game against Maryland Bobcats, they started a little bit on their back foot, too. You know, Maryland providing the pressure early on, but Stumptown doing a good job bending, not breaking. This time, well, they broke a little bit. They gave up that early goal, but I like how they're responding right now. I mean, honestly, they're playing a lot more cohesive, and I, I think we're going to see some more goals in this one. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely seems that way. Uh, we got Jacob Krim passing to Martinez. McGrath coming out very deep to get the ball. Chunga also went way out from the forward position back to Martinez and back to Chunga. Oh, a little bit of a slow pass. Krim to Martinez, back to Chunga. McGrath over here on the left-hand side. And Martinez. Benz Benaro and yet another pass out of bounds uh, from Stumptown. Danny, we've been seeing a lot of that. What what do you think is, is, is happening there from Stumptown and their ability to connect with their passes so yeah, far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're forcing it a little bit. I, I think they're doing a good job building pressure, or not pressure, um, possession out of the back and building up, but it seems like they're getting a little panicky up near the final third, and they're trying to just force it a little bit. Sometimes you just got to slow down, take a breath, and let it come to you. But, Absolutely. You know, yeah, like you said, we have seen a couple, uh, couple more giveaways than we'd like. Oh, a little bit of a tussle there about the midway line. This one's going to go 
Los Angeles' way. And a free kick about the halfway line. Looks like McLaughlin will come up and take it for the force. Good move by Osagueda. Gets it up to Cheney, out to Kashani, and into the box, and a great defensive move by Krim to get the ball out of the box, but the ball is still live. Kashani keeps it alive. Oh, and a near miss there by Edson Alvarado, who has come across the other side of the pitch in the last several minutes. You know, Kashani's the guy I'm watching. It's, it's been going to him a lot on this near side. And they've been playing through him a lot, and he's been whipping in a lot of balls. Stumptown's got to be careful of him. Yeah, and they don't have a lot of answers for him. As Carpe gets it out, Ward. And here's Hines coming out back to Ward. Ooh, 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 come on. Good ball into the box, but good defensive header from the force. Garcia Sosa. Out to get the ball. To Chunga, Williams. Ball kind of flies through into McGrath. A little bit of an errant pass trying to get to Ward. And the force are back in, but Chunga, the night defensive play to, War to Williams. Out to Garcia Sosa, but again, just a little too much on the pass there. Garcia Sosa had some room too. If he would have been able to collect that and turn, he had some space. Absolutely, a lot of green grass there. Back to the goalkeeper, Gomez. Kashari. Oh, excellent effort there. Martinez sniffs it out to Williams. And another errant pass. I don't know if Chunga thought he was offside or what was going on there, but he just didn't seem to react to that as the force will again play it from the keeper. You know, I will say this. I like the idea. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they're, they're slipping balls through, and right now there's just a little bit of you know, miscommunication going on. They're not able to connect on that final pass, but once they do, they're in. Long ball down to Cheney, controls it with his chest. I've been real impressed with Cheney as well. Yeah, absolutely. He's He's been a menace thus far um, as Martinez is going to get a foul. Big, strong body, but he still has a lot of control. I mean, you saw it on that first goal way back in the 12th minute. He's got good control for him. Frankie Martinez... Trying to argue his case, but I don't think he's going to win that one. And we got a free kick for the force. Looks like Berea was over it. It's going to be Abraham Villon to take the free kick. And a foul in the box. <laughs> well, Stumptown will take that every day. Yeah. I always find that funny when you get all lined up for a free kick and you kick the ball and then immediately the referee blows the whistle mm -hmm. for a foul. McGrath pushing forward, trying to get an opportunity up to Carpe. Carpe out to Garcia Sosa, manages to collect the pass. Ward on the right-hand side. Flings in across, but save by Gomez. That was a good effort. Cheney again, but nobody out in front with him. And so he loses the ball, and it will be stumped town throw. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that. There's 10 on the other side of the field for L.A., and I think right now that's what they're okay with doing. They're okay with absorbing the pressure. They've got a 1-0 lead, and right now Stumptown has a little bit of momentum. Yeah, put numbers back there and make it hard for them. Yeah, absolutely. No... No impetus for them to, to score again if they don't have to, as long as they can keep him out. It's a good switch. Martinez to Hines. Garcia Sosa trying to make something happen in the center of the park out to Ward. Ward with Hines with the overlapping run. Cross just a little too strong and goes over the top of the goal for a goal kick. Getting a little closer, though. You know, we're seeing a little bit more. Yeah, the attack seems to have picked up. Uh, Danny, anything that you're seeing from, from Stumptown over the last five, ten minutes that, that get you excited about the possibility of, 
of goals being scored on this side? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty much everything that we've said. I mean, there's been a little bit of miscommunication there trying to find that final ball, but getting a little bit closer. They're getting some more crosses whipped in. Those last two crosses, eh, not exactly what you'd like, but might be a numbers game. Keep crossing them in, and eventually one will connect. For sure. McLaughlin for the force. Not a lot of space, but Atta Kashani, who has miles of space out here on the near side. Nobody covering him. I think if I had one critique right now of Stumptown, they are a little bit spread out. They're not putting enough pressure on that back line. They're just, LA Forest has a little bit too much time in the back and able to uh, start creating. But if they can just get a little bit more pressure a little bit early on, Maybe that can force an errant pass by uh, by the force. Yeah, Vion tries to get it up top, but Cheney can't control it. Stumptown controlling the ball again. Here's Krim. Out to McGrath. Again, this near side for both teams has been quite popular. As McGrath pushing forward. Out, out to Williams, who can't control it. And kicks it out of bounds for a L.A. throw in. Again, as, you're, as you've been saying, getting close, but that... That last opportunity, not quite there as Gomez kicks it out, but straight to Stumptown. As Alvarado finds Vion down the center of the park. Good stop. The Cheney, but too many blue shirts there. Oh, Martinez errant pass. Alvarado doing some dancing moves and a shot right over the top of the bar. I could have. Could have given Gonzalez trouble if he had hit target, but a little over the top there. The dancing was nice, though. The dancing made, was very nice. Yeah, made a couple defenders miss on nice. that one. Just couldn't uh, find the final product in that. <laughs> Williams to Garcia. Sosa out to Ward and to Hines. Back to Benyaro. Martinez. Williams on the left. Martinez turning, looking downfield, coming all the way up to the halfway line, and then giving it away. Bion. Oh. Hines tried to stop, and we no call there. Interesting. Play on, says the referee. McGrath. Out to Ward, a little too much on the pass. And you can see the frustration on the part of the Stumptown players, no, Danny. I, I like Ward a lot, but I don't think you can really blame the pass on that one. I mean, <laughs> that was just barely off. And, you know, I, it's close. Yeah, it's you, just have close, to, but you just have to wonder if it's the general sense of, like, that's been mm -hmm. kind of coming throughout the game and starting to build up. Yeah. Kashani, well pressured. Out to Vion in the middle of the park. McLaughlin. Back to Gomez and goal, trying to switch the play. Carpe putting a little pressure on him from his striker position. And it's a throw in. Long throw, Williams handles it, but Alvarado for the force comes up with it. Now McLaughlin on the opposite flank. Again, lots of room to run, and he's going to go all the way past midfield. Still running. Gets it up to Cheney, who's tripping and finally taken down by Barano. McGrath to Martinez. Out to Williams. Garcia Sosa. Good defense there by Alawine. Alvarado. Martinez goes down, manages to make contact with the ball and get the get it out of trouble. Stumptown on the quick break here. Chunga still in control. Excellent effort there. The Carpe. He runs out of real estate, and McGrath cannot keep it in. That's a great recovery on defense over there for Stumptown because he had it. 
He had it, and Stumptown was able to close in just quick enough right there. Yeah, that looked really dangerous on the other end. Uh, you know, the Force have not created a lot of opportunities since their goals, their the goal that they scored. But when they've gotten them, they've gotten very close, and um, got to be concerned about that for for Stumptown. Back to Gomez. Fion, Alvarado. Vion kind of working as the engine here for, for the force over the last bit of time. And cross all the way to Kashani, who makes an immediate pass to Alvarado, who can't control it. Krim to Benyardo. Chunga coming way out to get the ball to Hines. Again, every time they try to move down that right-hand side for Stumptown, that seems to be blocked. So they seem almost forced down their left-hand side as Graf loses it. Alvarado with a lot of space, able to get out to Alwine. Good defensive move by McGrath. But LA holds onto it, so Ward breaks it up. Nearing the end of the first half here. About to see what we got in terms of stoppage time to close out this first half. Waiting for the uh, fourth official's notice here as Hines gets it out to Garcia Sosa back to Chunga to Hines. Good move by Chunga, but he can't quite maintain control as that ball goes flying into the towards the scoreboard here at the Sportsplex. Danny, what do you think is going to be the conversation for, for Stumptown as we head towards towards the half here? Well, I, I think they recovered well after that first goal, like we said. But when do we start pushing the pressure a little bit? They're building nicely, but when do they start pushing the envelope and start trying to push for that goal? Because right now it just seems a little methodical in the buildup, and they're just not able to find that last pass. Eventually, Absolutely. you got to start got to stop thinking possession, 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 and just go for the net. Yeah. So I'm sure that conversation will be had. Obviously, it's not going to be right when they come out of half, but I imagine they're going to start thinking, okay, we, we got to start pushing the envelope here eventually. Absolutely. you got to get that goal eventually. Uh, two minutes of stoppage time uh, was on the board. Probably about a halfway through that nearly at this point, just waiting for the referee's whistle. Force trying to, to make something happen here at the tail end of the half. Martinez out to Gonzalez who controls and gives it back to the Stumptown defender. Maybe time for one more attack here from Stumptown. They don't seem in a major hurry to, <laughs> to get down to the end of the pitch. I guess the fear of the possibility of a, of a counter attack is very real at this point. Oh, good chested pass. Martinez to Garcia Sosa. McGrath, rather, who comes back around to the left-hand side. Running out of room, but gets it to Williams, who can't quite control it. Martinez coming over from his center back position. Chunga down the center. Good cross into Ward, but can't quite maintain it. And he heads it towards the goalkeeper. And that is the halftime whistle. With our score at halftime here, the LA Force 1, Stumptown AC 0. So again, my name is Robert Morrison, and I'm uh, pleased to be here with you. Again, with me, Danny Trevor. Um, again, Danny, we talked about it a little bit, um, but any other thoughts about what the conversation will be like for both sides as we head into, uh, into the, uh, the second half? I think the force have to be pretty happy, right? I mean, you know, they have a game plan. They went out, pushed hard, got their goal, and they clearly put their foot off the gas a little bit there and, and put more uh, emphasis on, on the back line and defense. And it's been working out because Stumptown, they really haven't had that many golden opportunities. We both agree. They're starting to build up nicely. But, you know, other than uh, half effort on the uh, free kick and a shot from outside the box, Keeper Gomez really hasn't had that much to do. So if you're the LA Force, keep going. Keep going along with this game script. And if you're Stumptown, well, 
I, I think you have an identity. You want to have possession base and build out of the back. Yeah, keep doing that, but eventually the time's going to be, time is going to come where you want to push a little bit more forward. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they have the ability to get more offensive in their lineup at this point. It seems like a pretty uh, stacked lineup in that regard in terms of pressing forward and trying to get goals, but it, it definitely feels like they were taken aback by the uh, the initial push from from the force and um, didn't really know how to sort of absorb that pressure early on and now they find themselves in a situation where they're down one goal. Now the good news is it's only one goal and so a lot can happen in the course of 45 minutes in the second half. Yeah, and you know, it, you got to remember, this is a sh pretty short season. What is it, eight, te eight games yeah. for these teams. If they want any chance, the force anyways, uh, of making a run towards a championship or, or playoffs or whatever, they got to start getting results because if they lose this one and go 0 and 2, they still got to play the big boys in Detroit and Chattanooga. Those are tough ones. If they lose this one, they're going to have a mountain to climb. So, yeah, they're coming out a little bit more focused, a little bit more energized for this one. So it does not surprise me at all that the L.A. Force wanted to set the precedent early. Yeah, absolutely. And as we were talking about with uh, Sam at the beginning, they've been giving up a lot of goals over the course of the of the season so far. And they've made a concerted effort to, to make sure that they are dictating the terms of this game. And um, I think that's really important uh, for them to continue to do. For Sumptown, obviously they need to go get a goal and, and – they need to take the initiative upon themselves to, to make better passes as they get closer to the uh, to the uh, opposing team's goal. I think that's where they've broken down in the last you know 20, 25 minutes of the half was they get it really close into the penalty area and then something, uh, an errant pass or something would happen and they just weren't able to, to get the work done. So you hopefully they'll have a play in there. I, I like the crosses. Those are great. Start whipping in shots from outside the box. All right, let's start really testing Gomez here. It feels like we're trying to find we. Stumptown. <laughs> Feels like Stumptown AC is really trying to find that perfect ball, dissect the defense, and that's great when it works, but right now, it's not working. Yeah. Start throwing some shots in the box. Keeper might spill it, grab an easy rebound. Sometimes that's what it takes. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 the goal the force scored is pretty much in that area. I mean, they put the ball near the goal, and uh, you know, Cheney was in a a, a good lo location to, to tap it in and, and make it happen. But again, like I said, when it happened, it wasn't the prettiest thing on the planet, but it was it was uh, effective. The backflip was pretty and that's a Oh, yeah, the backflip was, was uh, How many times do you think you practiced that before the game? <laughs> Probably every every time he scores in, in training, I'm going to guess. You know, it just goes that you don't need to score bangers to do backflips. You can have the Absolutely. easiest tap. You can do a PK. <laughs> you can do a P tap it. You well, do a backflip, people are going to be talking. I, I couldn't do a backflip back flip even if I scored a goal, so it wouldn't even matter. That's important. So, um, All right, we are going to uh, take a little break here from the Sportsplex and Matthews. Uh, we'll be back for the second half in about 10, 11 minutes, and looking forward to being back with you for the second half of L.A. Force Stumptown AC live from the Sportsplex and Matthews.
And welcome back to the Sportsplex at Matthews here on MyCujo TV. Stumptown AC hosting the LA Force. The Force up 1-0 after 45 minutes of play. Getting ready to start the second half uh, here with me. Uh, my name is Robert Morrison, and here with me is uh, Danny Trevor. Uh, and we have uh, Sam Goldfarber joining us again um, here later in the second half. Uh, Danny, we talked about the, the key players at the beginning of the match, or the, the key units, as it were, for the, for the force. Uh, Alex McGrath uh, for Stumptown and the force uh, defense. How would you assess both uh, McGrath and the force defense at the halfway point as yeah. we head into the second half? Well, let's just change, in my opinion, change McGrath to the entire midfield because right now that's where the final pass is lacking. Travis Ward, Williams, they're getting in good positions. They're just not able to find that final key ball. So you link in, get better passes, and that final third, Sumtown AC can get back in this. And then uh, LA Force's defense, they've looked great. You know, they, we said it just before the half. They had a game plan, clearly. Pushed the tempo early on. They did that. And then they kind of stepped back. They kind of, you know, put the numbers back. Once they have a 1-0 lead, hey, we're fine holding out of this. Parked the bus. And so far it's working because right now, Stumptown AC, they have not had that golden opportunity that they're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. No pressure on uh, Hugo Gomez on the force, in the force goal so far. Um, that will have to change in the second half if Stumptown wants to get back into this game. Getting ready to start. Referee has the uh, ball in the center circle. Doesn't look like any changes for either side. Although, as I say that, it looks like there is a sub being prepared for the force as we uh, get ready. Yeah, looks like that is happening. Looks like eight. Oliveira. Yeah, Julio Rubio coming off. And it is uh, number eight, Ciro Reese de Oliveira for the force. A little surprised about that. I thought Julio Rubio looked pretty uh, pretty good that first 45. Yeah, the, considering the defense held up so well, it's very interesting that they went ahead and made a move there. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Schedule is tough. We do have to mention that. I mean, it's not just a one game a week kind of thing. That's they true. just played on Friday, and they got another one coming up real shortly after this, too. Yeah, and Stumptown's next game, I believe, is this uh, this Friday. So the the turnaround is 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 swift. Yeah. All right, second half underway. Stumptown with the ball, and it is Alex McGrath out to Ward. Ward looking to make a pass. Cuts on the inside. And puts it back out to Krim. Stumptown will probably need to, will probably look to assert themselves early as they look to build themselves back into this game. Martinez moving in and makes a pass to no one in particular. Goal kick for the force. Interesting start to the, to the, the half there. Danny, I don't know what if that was a design kind of play or something, but that didn't really go off. Force get it down. Cheney heads it out. Oliveira. Oliveira. Cheney's been a tough uh, assignment for the Stumptown defense so far. And, yeah, he, he's got that goal, but he's had other opportunities too. Martinez controlling the ball. McGrath kicks it back to him. A little off target there. McGrath coming way deep. Is it out to Krim? Looking down. A long ball. Immediate pressure on Carpe, but he manages to control the ball. Gets it back to Ward. Martinez again. Garcia Sosa. Chunga. Back to Garcia Sosa, who's got some space as one of the force players fell down. He gets it out to Ward. Ball into the box, but right at Gomez. So that's a, a good a good start there, Danny, for the for Stumptown. Immediately putting a little bit of pressure on, on the goalkeeper, if not the the most ideal. 
Yeah, and we're seeing Stumptown play a little bit more long ball in this early on in the second half. Um, so could possibly see a little bit of a change of mentality here. But so far, I do like what I'm seeing. That early cross in, yeah, it wasn't on target, but making Gomez catch the ball there, get him a little bit more involved in this game. I like it. Garcia Sosa tries to get control of the ball, but comes out to Hines. Over to Alvarado pushing forward, but can't get it to Cheney. Hines for Stumptown. Breha. Hines again as possession changing feet quite often here. Chunga out to Ward. Ward kind of pressure forward and a clunching tackle there from Aylwine. Tries to find Cheney, but good defense there on Krim. And here's some of the Stumptown supporters crying out for a little uh, love for their hometown team, but to no avail. I got to Gomez. Carpe putting the pressure on that. I like this a lot more. They're already starting to put a little bit more pressure on. Well, it looks like they're, they're trying to match what, what the force were doing in the first half a little bit. Ward. Benarjo. Martinez. Martinez coming forward. Still with the ball. And loses it. Talawan. He gets the ball back. McGrath comes in. Good tackle. Martinez still up front. Carpe just a little long, but still has control of the ball in the box. Tries to make it across, but blocked. Blocked again in the second effort. <laughs> Stump down throw. Garcia Sosa. Harno turns. McGrath, oh, again, another errant pass miscommunication. Hines, though, plays it off. Garcia Sosa. Chunga to Carpe. Takes a shot. Elevates it over the net. But a well-played, well, played, well uh, organization play there. Uh, Danny, what do you think about that? This is so much better. This is so much better. You see the pressure. They're forcing the force. Oh, God, I can't believe I had to say that. <laughs> had to be done. So they're forcing them to make those quick passes when they're not ready and they're causing problems. Yeah, not the final product that we want to see, but I, I think this is so much better right now from Stumptown. Absolutely. All right, goal kick for, force, for the force. Long ball. Cheney out of bounds. But it will go off a Stumptown player. Alvarado will throw it in for the force. Oliveira, Vion, Alvarado, back to Vion. Interesting, they seem to have lost a defender as Alvarez has come in in the midfield with the change there. Bereja, back out to Villa, Vion, who loses it. Changa can't quite control it. And McLaughlin back to his goalkeeper. Again, coming up that right hand side for the force as there's a little bit of an errant pass trying to find Kashani Martinez on the throw in out to Krim and Hines moving it down the center of the park Chunga Navia and Martinez again. He's coming up very deep the last for the start of the second half. Very interesting the way that the uh, center back is moving forward. Navia with a good move coming through the center. Oh, just misses McGrath as Alvarado picks it off. But our Garcia Sosa with a nice tackle interception. But again, can't quite find McGrath. And Krim will control the ball, but it bounces off him, but he recovers. Whew, Cheney was pressing in on him. That would have probably been bad news for Stumptown. Hines, good through ball to McGrath. 
McGrath with an opportunity, but another good block. McLaughlin gets in front of the ball. Vion coming out. Finds Oviera. Tries to chip it over the top. Cheney can't quite get into it. It's a nice defensive play there. By Stumptown, McGrath tries to control the ball, but cannot quite do it. And we turn back around again. Tempo is really fast this second half compared to the first half. There. Yeah, I really like this from Stumptown. I know I keep saying it, but <laughs> the pressure that they're putting on the force is, is excellent to watch. Oh, tough one off the chest of McGrath. Ward plays it out. Hines coming again down the right-hand side. McGrath, Hines. Looking down, trying to connect with Chunga, but can't quite do it. Interception by Vion. Cheney. Hines with a nice defensive play. Oliveira gets the ball for the force. As Vion's still on the ground. And he pops back up. Uh, McGrath didn't seem to Miraculous care for that too terribly much. Uh, that was very interesting. Uh, cross uh, <laughs> switch the play to Alvarado. A little gamesmanship there. A little bit. Vion now on his feet. Alvarado out to McLaughlin. Again, a nice switch of the play there. Kashani, the focal point in that early part of the first half, disappeared a little bit through the second part of the of the second half of the first half and into the second. Be interesting to see if that is a concerted effort. Bereja can't quite control it. Krim, Navia, Hines, and back to the goalkeeper. Yes, Rob. Danny, again, it seems to be, the, as you mentioned, the pace picking up, but still got to get that, that, final, that final move as Hines makes the switch to Martinez. Yeah, but I have no problem with the way Stumptown is playing. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet, but the way things are progressing right now, you can see the Forest defense is starting to crack a little bit. So I, I like what I'm seeing right now out of Stumptown. Alvarado, a little bit of a tip pass, but Cheney is able to con get control of it. Berea pressured well, and he's taken down by McGrath. Picks up the foul. So a free kick from just beyond midfield. It'll be Seamus McLaughlin to take it for the force. Again, live from the Sportsplex here in Matthews. Stumptown AC down to the LA Force. 1-0. It's Alvarado puts it out to McLaughlin, who crosses it. Switches it to the other side of the pitch there. On a good run here by Oviera. The pass is in place, but he is immediately pressured. And good defense there from Stumptown. Seems like every time an LA Force player gets the ball, there's at least two or three Stumptown guys on him. Now, obviously that's gonna open up the field, and if they can find that open pass, then Stumptown might be in some trouble. But the pressure right now, it's a lot better than what it was in the first half. Oh, good skill from Garcia Sosa. Oh, He's taken down from behind. Oh, this will be an interesting play here. It's a yellow card. A yellow card for Diego Berea as he took down Garcia Sosa from behind. That was a dangerous looking play. What do you think about that yellow card? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's the right call. Um, it it wasn't dog so. It wasn't that vicious. So I, I wouldn't call it a red card at all. Yeah, good skill from Garcia Sosa along the sideline there. And Berea just just came and just took him. No ball at all. Oh. So that's a rough, a rough play. But Garcia Sosa seems okay as he stands over the ball. Yellow card caution issued to number 87 of the LA Force, Diego Barrera. Along with Alex McGrath. 57th minute of play. Minute 57 still 1-0 to the LA Force. Good opportunity here on a free kick dead ball play. I have an opportunity to get hopefully a decent shot here for Stumptown. Need a good delivery to start off with. 
And it's Garcia Sosa. Oh! Pretty good delivery, but they couldn't quite get on the end of it. Maybe a little too much on that. Danny, what do you think? Well, you know, when you got Carpe up there, you got all those big bodies. Make it a jump ball, you know, have them uh, rise up there. And you can see from this replay, yeah, just a little bit too far, but I like the idea there. If it was just a couple yards out, it could have been in the back of the net. Absolutely. A foul here on uh, Carpe as, um, let's see who that is, and McLaughlin hits the deck. Entering the 59th minute, which means that my time with the uh, the broadcast here tonight is nearing its end. About to turn uh, the commentary over to Danny and Sam. Um, again, my name is Robert Morrison, um, and we are we are going to have uh, a little contest here. Uh, no no bad blood in the in the in the booth by any stretch of the imagination. But do check out the uh, Stumptown AC social media in the coming days to vote for. Uh, your favorites, and uh, we'll see what happens from there. Wait, there's not bad blood? I'm not supposed to hate you guys? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, Whoops. I, well, I guess we'll see how that goes. Uh, Carpe gets the feed. Uh, McGrath out to Ward. Ward back to McGrath. There's Reese Williams in the center. Come on. Come Coming on. in. Whip it in. Whips it in. Oh, just a little too far as Chunga cannot quite get control. And with that, I will hand uh, the microphone over to Sam. Uh, Sam and Danny will take you off for the rest of the match. So we're looking at a goal kick now for the LA Force. Sam, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good. You know, uh, very eventful uh, possession just, just before I hopped on here. Absolutely there. I love that move inside the box and crossing it in. And Chunga just a little bit late, but Stumptown getting closer. Yeah, and what I was going to say, honestly, even before that happened, was Stumptown is just doing a good job moving it quickly to open up L.A. I think the big thing in the first half that I wrote down was Stumptown was very slow moving it. They looked a little tentative. They didn't run into space. What I really liked to open the second is they've been blinking quicker, trying to get more and more guys involved, get those passing triangles going, and it's really spread out. LA and trick them into more of an end-to-end -end game than they'd like up 1-0. Oh, I agree with that 100%. I mean, they are sprinting to every ball. This is where we uh, see how their fitness is tested because that is tough. You can't do that for an entire 90. Entire 45? Possibly. So we'll see how it goes. And oddly enough, they, given how slow moving the first half was they might have actually conserved energy for a bit of more of a push here i know that's not what they're intending to do right when you go down one nil you're not trying to sit back and relax but it's allowed them to move the ball a lot quicker as you're seeing here down the line i'll, I'll let you take this real quick and let's see if we can get a whipped in cross here who's that ward williams excuse me I've also really liked what Williams has done these last few mm -hmm. minutes. We saw on the cross earlier, they've gotten him a lot more involved going forward, which is something I like to see. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just look at the other side of the field right now. The only one out there is Gonzo, the keeper. Everyone else on this side of the field. So Stumptown really putting the pressure on LA Force. Uh, who's going to take this free kick right now? And we'll see. I think that they need to disguise it a bit better. I know I think you, you and Robert were both talking about it a little uh, – on their free kicks, they didn't throw a lot in the box, and you knew they were going to shoot. Now things get a bit more interesting because you have so many bodies across the box. You can dink it short or even boot it to the back post. We'll see what they do. I think you got to put Gonzo under pressure, though. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a tough enough angle. I, you're not going to see a shot here. So we'll see. Is it going to be Garcia Sosa? No. Uh, too much. He's going to want that one back. Yeah, it had a, had a lot of whip to it, but had a bit too much mustard on it and just not enough to trouble Gomez in any way, shape, or form there, Danny. So LA Force will restart, and if you're the Force, you're under all this pressure right now. What, do, you, do you stick with your game plan, or do you try to step back a little bit? Because it does seem like they're starting to push forward as well. It's not just Stumptown getting their numbers forward. 
But we are seeing LA Force also put some numbers forward, and they're trying to get on the counterattack as well. What do they do here? Yeah, so it's such an end-to-end -end game, and in some ways, Stumptown has baited them into that just because of how fast they've moved it, and then it creates space for LA to run into. But because of that, it'll stretch them out on the other end. So, for me, I think maybe you try to take the sting out of it just a little bit if you're the Force. I know that you might be sacrificing opportunities going forward, um, but I think maybe you pick, you do what you do more in the first half. When you don't have the ball and the ball's in the Stumptown defensive third, you maybe run a few white shirts at them, see if you can uh, draw any turnovers. But I think with the way things are moving, Stumptown growing more and more into the game, you got to take the sting out of it just a bit. Here's Hines. He's playing the long ball. Can he get out to Chunga? Carpe. Carpe still got it. Now uh, where's the support? There it is. Ward. Ward still with it, dancing around. Carpe, back to Hines. Hines, Chunga, Hines. Great ball of movement here by Stumptown. Now they just have to find somebody going into the box. I like Garcia Sosa on the edge of the area if they can find him. Garcia Sosa. Garcia Sosa. Finding Ward again. Ward. Oh. Can't find that last pass to Chunga there. Chunga had some space. He probably would have been able to whip in a good cross right there. But what I will say is I've been really impressed by Garcia Sosa. I think there's no one more in the midfield for Stumptown that's benefited more from the way the game has changed kind of script-wise than him. He's found a lot of space in the center of the park. He does well to maneuver through double teams, triple teams. I think that he's been very impressive here to open the second half. Absolutely. He has been, it seems, I don't know about more involved in the second half, but more productive in the second half. It seemed like that first half they were... Almost stuck in glue, stuck in molasses. They couldn't find that final pass. But they're starting to get a little bit more creative with it, a little bit more daring. And I agree with you. I think Garcia Sosa has been great. Yeah, and now you see a change here uh, in Romero, who made, I think, Double his sub. appearance off the bench last game. And Toro started so last match. But I'm totally with you on that Garcia Sosa point. I also think he's kind of moved even more centrally which has allowed him to exert more of an influence because you don't know which way he's going to go with the ball, if he's going to keep it himself. He leads this team in assists this year, so he's such a multifaceted threat going forward. I agree with you, but, you know, it, 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 I, I know I said this point before, but when do we start actually going for the shot? Because it seems like we're trying to find that final ball, that precision, that surgical pass through the middle. Sometimes you just got to shoot it from outside the box and rush the keeper and try to get an easy rebound. I like the way that Stumptown is playing. Don't get me wrong. I think they're looking much better this second half. But Gomez, eh, he still has kind of not been tested that much in the second half. I, I agree with you. I think that... Uh, it definitely, when you have that space on the edge of the area, you just have to have a go at some point. And I think that it's been a lot through the wings, and I've liked that, but no final cross. Besides that one from Williams that hit the side netting mm -hmm. on the on the back post, none of them have really, really done too much trouble for uh, Gomez. And even that back post cross, Gomez might have been beaten if it had been on target, but he wasn't actually troubled by it. So that's the I'm with you on that. Maybe you get a more straight and, straight and narrow look at it. Looks like uh, Kashani subbed off for LA Force. I, he, I thought he was the best player for them in that first half. I mean, you know, Cheney had the goal, obviously. What was that, 12th minute? But you know, Kashani was, is, was vital for them in that first half. So I'm a little surprised to see him subbed off. We haven't called his name as much, though, in this half. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe he, he, he faded a bit more in the half. Maybe they're going a bit more defensive as well, because uh, now they've got Toro playing wing back, and mm -hmm. he was more of a out-and-out left-back left-back uh, last game. But, yeah, no, I think in the first half, he was crucial to how they switched the play, and whenever it looked like they were going to exert too much pressure on the left, they'd flip it over to him on the right, and he had acres of space. So, yeah, maybe it's a bit rash, but perhaps they see a scenario where they want to slow things down and take the pace out of it a bit more. Martinez now taking it up, trying to find the long ball. Carpe pushed in the back. Yeah, that's going to be a foul every time. Yeah, Alawine getting a bit aggressive. I don't know why uh, why <laughs> our man uh, <laughs> Coach, Coach Peterson is too upset about that one. I heard him say it was yeah. soft, but um, yeah, that'll be a foul. Tenor. You know, anytime your arm extends there, which we saw it there. 
It's going to be a call every time. Absolutely. And here's another intriguing opportunity uh, for you. Maybe they get a more straight look at the goal than perhaps a back post cross, although they've got a lot of bodies near the box here. Well, Navio wide open right there. Do they want to play it short and have him drive it in? Nope. They're driving it in right now, and LA Force doing a really nice job of just clearing the box. But Stumptown's still with it. Uh, who's that Williams taken down? I'm impressed by Williams. I think that even in the first half, he had a lot of the ball, and he navigated pressure decently well. I mean, look, when you got three white shirts bearing down on you, there's not much you can do. But here in the second especially, we talk about the crosses. He draws the foul on the near side here. I think he continues to grow into this, links up with his winger a bit more. Maybe they get it in the middle, the Garcia Sosa, and we have some uh, business brewing. Well, Garcia Sosa, the only one here. They usually have two or three around the free kick, but obviously it is Garcia Sosa taking this one. We'll see what direction he goes with it. Does he continue to loft it in and make that jump ball for Carpe, or does he whip it in? This one. Well done by Gomez to go and grab it. He's been quite composed throughout the 90. I know he didn't have as much work to do in the first, but here in the second, there's been a bit of pressure on him, and he's managed to come out and claim his instincts are good. He's not overcomplicating anything. A foul there by the LA Force. I, I didn't see much in that one, to be honest, but Stumptown will take it. Here's Hines. And playing it back, Krim. Back to Gonzalez. We haven't called Gonzalez's name at all in the second half. Sometimes you got to pass it back to the keepers just to make sure he's awake. Julio Sosa. Garcia Sosa. My fault. I thought I said something wrong there. <laughs> Chunga. Garcia Sosa. Just a little behind there and Force trying to restart. I like McGrath though, continuing to keep up with the play there, keep the defenders on their toes a bit more for the Force. We know this Force. Here we go, here we go, oh. here we go. Finish. Oh, just outside. That was it. It was a phenomenal look for McGrath. I talked about how I liked they were sending bodies forward. They do that again and get the interception. Fans get fooled because it hits the side netting. Here, if we just see the replay, really, really sloppy pass back, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to see McGrath puts the pressure on. Carpe, nice pressure, gets the ball. And McGrath, just wide. Tough angle. You know, you got to hit it one time. I can't put too much pressure on him, especially after that banger he scored the last game. We'll give him a we'll, little bit of... We'll, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt Yeah, there, there we go. <laughs> By the way, folks, if you haven't seen that goal, uh, go online and find it because it was a cracker. Ball, ball was just lofted, I believe, from Ward, and it hit him on the volley, sliced it top corner from 20 yards. It was incredible. Yeah, keeper just staring at it, looking at going. He was admiring it just like we were from the outside. So fantastic strike. And uh, McGrath, the birthday boy, almost had another one there. It looks like you got a change coming up. Looks like Chunga is going to exit the action here. And Ramos Godoy is going to enter. Chunga, I think a little bit better in that second half. I think we can say that about most everyone on uh, Stumptown right now, but he was a little bit more lively. And I think what they're really trying to do here is with Ramos Godoy and Garcia Sosa, play them as two kind of number 10 hybrid wingers off of Carpe, who's more of a target man, or mm -hmm. at least that's what they want him to be. So if you put two creative guys off Carpe, maybe it allows Carpe to play more centrally and creates opportunities in the center of the box more. Navia under pressure right here. Well done. Hines. Hines to Krim. Krim to Gonzalez, now he's under pressure. And coming into the game right away, and uh, welcome to the game. Here's your first foul. Yeah, Ramos Godoy, Ramos Godoy is a super sub uh, for them. He likes to come off the bench a bit. Um, he, he did start the full 90 against New Amsterdam, but he's more of somebody who's going to be that injection of pace, life, creativity to maybe open games up, and that's what Stumptown needs right now. McGrath now. Garcia Sosa back to Martinez. Where do they go from here? Martinez. Nice middle. Getting the sub. Nice involved early on. Trying to find Hines. They do. Can Hines whip it in? Hines slowing it down. Navia. Now Navia is going to try to whip it in. 
And the LA Force, that's uh, going to be a foul on Krim. And one thing I was uh, saying earlier is when the Force kind of put Stumptown in situations where they're deeper in their own half, they need to send some shirts at them. I like what they did earlier where they put pressure on Krim here in the center, hard of defense. Just make him navigate his way out of trouble. And Stumptown did well to play out of it. I think part of that's just because they've organized their passing triangles. They know a bit more how to break down this Force defense. But again, keep them honest. Basically say to them, you're not going to run rampant over us like we like we did to you in the first 15 minutes or you did to us in these opening 20 of the second. Martinez now is trying to figure out what to do with it. Force putting on pressure early on. And you know, the later on we get in this match, the more desperate Stumptown is going to get. And that'll be easier for LA Force to get that quick counterattack goal. Here is Travis Ward. Ward up the middle. Hines. Back to Ward. Ward. Ward with the long shot. And that is out and wide, but I like the idea there. There's the blast you were looking for. There's the blast I was looking for. Maybe I should stop talking because that was out and wide. But, hey, I, I like what I see from Stumptown. We're seeing more opportunities for them. We're seeing them get a little bit closer. And we'll see if they can uh, put one in the net. I think we're going to get another goal in this one. Whether it does come from Stumptown's buildup or a counterattack from LA Force, we'll see. But I do think we got another one in this. And this is perhaps more of the game we expected in the first half. We expected Stumptown to maybe boss possession, be the team creating more chances, and maybe the Force defense would cave or counter. And in, it just didn't go that way in the first. In the first, it was the exact opposite. And now Stumptown may be a bit more confident. Uh, they come out of halftime maybe with less pressure because they're down and they feel like, okay, we can just kind of uh, see what we're doing. We don't have any lead to protect. But I'm definitely... I think order has been restored if you're somebody who wrote the game script in advance. It's unfortunate that it took a goal to do that because obviously you're down 1-0 and if this result holds and you lose, well, no one likes losing. But, you know, a coach once told me, learn how to have amnesia. You make a mistake, forget about it, move on. And it seems like Stumptown have done just that because they've played a lot better since that goal and in particular since the second half started. I'm fully with you, Danny. I think they did a great job putting that bad, I don't want to say bad, but rocky first half behind them. And you could say bad. It wasn't great. It was you know, they, they were being run over by the LA Force. It, it, the first 15 minutes were especially difficult for them. I word it that way. And I think that um, sometimes when you open that poorly, it can weigh on you the rest of the 90 and you don't come out and you're not, and you don't bounce back but we've seen resilience from Stump Stumptown it's just a question now for me and, and you've mentioned this as well if you can find that decisive opportunity because they haven't had that yet you had the ward chance you had the free kick you had the back post ball that hit the side netting but nothing that has really given Hugo Gomez enough problems and that's going to be over the course of the next 15 minutes and the final 15 minutes how this game gets defined you saw a little bit earlier there, Vion tried to play the ball over the top to uh, Christian Chaney, and obviously it didn't find Chaney. You saw Chaney have his hands open, his palms open, and that's a sign of frustration, like, why aren't we playing it to me? Why aren't we playing it on the, on the ground? So you could see the force starting to get a little frustrated. We saw a little bit of that from Stumptown in the first half, and it seems like the script has changed a little bit. Carpe, let's see if you get on this one. That's a foul on Carpe. It's going to be a force ball on that one. I don't know if you can really argue that one. It seemed like both both were going for the ball, and Carpe kind of tripped him up there. Yeah, I think that the, those are one of those 50-50s, and anytime you're in the defensive third, you need to, it needs to be especially egregious from the defender to have that go your way as an attacking player. Looks like we got another sub from L.A. Force. Substitution being made for the L.A. Force entering the game. Number 24, Christopher Rebay for number 87, Diego Barrera. Christopher Rebay. I waited for the announcer to say that because I wasn't sure if it was Rebet or Rebay. So thank you, announcer. <laughs> we, we love the PA guys here. Yes, we love the PA absolutely. guys here. Absolutely. An interesting decision to take Barrera off. I know we mentioned we were a bit surprised at the removal of Kashami in the 65th. I think that this is another situation where you have a player in Barrera who had a good first half, caused a lot of problems, but now perhaps maybe in the second hasn't enjoyed the same success. You maybe bring Rabean, who's maybe a bit more defensive-minded. I think the force you can see perhaps trying to protect this a bit more. Um, and in their eyes, Ooh. 
hope nothing goes awry on the other end. Well, here is Rebe, and not the first uh, best first touch since entering the game. I don't know if Rebe is that defensive presence, because uh, right now he is playing up top, and he is listed as a striker. Yes, absolutely. And, I mean, I, he played left attacking mid in their last mm -hmm. matchup. It looks like they've sent him out now. Maybe they want more support uh, for Cheney is what it looks like. Um, but me, And maybe it's also for his versatility. I think Barrera is very confined to the wing. He's not going to track back as much. Much Maybe you'll see that with Rebe because he's kind of moving up and down. We'll, 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 I guess we'll get a glimpse at how the formation turns out. I was so impressed by Chaney in that first half. It just looked like he had such a command, and it seems like the ball just hasn't been there for him in that second half. So Rebe might be just the, uh, just the right juice for him to, to uh, keep connecting. Here is the long ball at... No call. Vion going down there. I thought that would have been a been a call, but referee keeps his whistle in his pocket. Martinez going up to Travis Ward. Game's got a frantic pace to it, and we've talked about kind of the whole second half. It's been that way, but now in the last 12, you can expect for Stumptown to ratchet it up. I don't mm -hmm. think this is slowing down at all. Yeah, and, you know, not that I want to keep talking about the ref here, but it seems like he's letting things go a little bit more. We saw in the early going he was calling a lot of fouls there, but you saw that one. You saw a little bit earlier on in the second half. It seems like he's letting them play a little bit more, and that's how I prefer it. Absolutely, I agree with you. Unless it's an egregious foul, um, I think you let the guys go and um, let this momentum build. Let the passing rhythms form. It makes for more entertaining soccer. Well done there by McGrath to slide it on out. A little bit of confusion what's going on. I, I thought it was pretty clear-cut throwing, and it is. Asagueda to take the throw. Chaney holding it up. There's just no one there for him, though. And they're going to give it a goal kick. And you see the scenarios have been flipped as well for attackers. Carpe was a bit on an island in the first half. Cheney's kind of been that way. Maybe that's why they make the Rebe substitution as well. But whenever you see Carpe get the ball, he's got midfielders rushing to his aid like he does here. Mm -hmm. And force clearing it out. Not so fast. Here's Williams taking a long shot. Shot long and wide there. To Gomez is right. Not able to really test him on that one. But even still, pressure. It's mounting. It's going well. Looking at the uh, 80th minute right now. Got a little 10 minutes plus some change. We'll see what Stumptown does in the final chapter of this one. If you're, just if you're just joining us, we are live from Sportsplex at Matthews, just outside North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Danny Trevor, alongside Sam Goldfarber. Did I say that right? Goldfarb, Goldfarb. Goldfarb, there we go. <laughs> All good, Danny. It's been an entertaining affair for sure. It's it's You can get a 1-0 that's kind of more dull in just one moment springs mm -hmm. up. This is not one of those. This second half has been all over the place, up and down N10. I really love the way it's developed. Here is Williams trying to find the cross. Nothing yet. Force on the counter. Nope. McGrath right there again. McGrath playing both sides of the field. We've seen him on this near side. We've seen him on this far side. He's doing a lot of running. I don't know if he has one of those trackers on. If he does, it would be interesting to see just how much uh, mileage he's covered today. Yeah, and especially in the second half, we uh, we talked about on that big chance that McGrath mm -hmm. had. He really set that up with the pressure. He was basically doing what LA Force did in the first half, sending his body recklessly at defenders and trying to just draw a mistake. He did, and he's done that multiple times today. So I've been impressed by how McGrath, even though maybe he hasn't been in the game on the ball as much as he would have liked, off it, he's still wreaking havoc and causing problems. Gonzalez playing with the ball right now. Send it out to Alex Martinez. Martinez playing long ball to no one. That's all right. Stumptown takes it over in the middle of the field. Oh, he's got some space. Trying to play the long ball. Trying to find Williams. And Williams does have it. Back to Travis Ward. He's got some space. He's got Hines in the middle. No, he decides to throw it inside. Carpe with the turn. Good block there by the LA Force. Travis Ward again. 
I gotta be honest, I don't know what the call is. Is that a handball or is that a foul? I believe they're calling that a foul. I didn't see it though. We got a substitution. Bay Kurtz. Bay Kurtz coming in for Travis Ward. Kurtz listed as well, one of the back line defense, but I don't imagine he'll be playing in the back. I'm sure he'll be pushing up in the midfield. He's a highly versatile player uh, for this Stumptown team, and he actually scored the winner in Stumptown's first ever victory in the Legends Cup against New Amsterdam. So he's up and down. I think they'll have him as uh, an end-to-end -end kind of player in midfield. He's going to exert his will up top, but he's quick and going to try to recover if anything goes counterwise for LA Force. And Hines right now finding Kurtz. Hey, Kurtz, what does he do with it? Kurtz still with it. Finding Garcia Sosa. Can he find it? Whip it in. That one curling, going out before coming back in. So they will call the goal kick right there. Still cause for optimism, though, if you're a stumped-down supporter. Uh, the play, the buildup before that was scintillating. Just the way they moved it through midfield and spread it out wide to Williams. And then that time, good opportunity for Garcia Sosa to cross it in. But it goes to your point once again. Can they find something outside of these uh, kind of 55 or 25 75 crosses and just get something directly on goal? They've had a couple shots from outside the box. They just need to get a bit closer. Have one of those uh, McGrath or or McGrath type opportunities or even something less audacious. Ward's goal uh, from, uh, from Saturday night. Just something that you can get a direct shot on Gomez. I think that's all you got to ask for if you're a Stumptown fan at this point. Hope you're clinical. Well, the LA Force. Taking it quick right here. And it doesn't appear as though they're in any hurry to rush the ball forward. Martinez with a good takeaway right there. Martinez. And Christian Cheney coming flying in. And I've noticed for the last 20 minutes, Stumptown's been playing out of a four-back. Um, I think that's just a testament to their aggressiveness, and I think they played better out of the four-back. Um, definitely a lot more uh, incisive build-up from it. Uh, maybe the five just was encouraging a bit too much defensive-minded, slow-moving uh, stuff in the first half. Yeah, eventually you do have to change it up. And, you know, when, when you have that much in the back and you're down by one, that's not going to be enough. So... I, I like the change. I, I think they can probably go one more gear and get one more person up top and try to find that final touch. But we'll see. We got just five minutes and change. Martinez. Navia to the sub. Bay Kurtz. Kurtz back to Navia. Navia back to Kurtz. Kurtz to Krim. Krim to Navia. And on the ground and... That's a little too easy for the LA Force. A good takeaway there. Here's Williams. Williams, that's an easy foul. Vion, the captain right there. Smart foul there because Williams was, had a little bit of space behind him. Yeah, no, I was really, I, I, again, McGrath managing to just maneuver consistently through midfield. Uh, the one thing I've been impressed by, we talked about Navia. Um, when you switch out of the five back, you'd think they would sacrifice the center back. They didn't. They just moved Navia up to more of a pivot role in front of the back four. And he's been very impressive just kind of moving all over side to side laterally around midfield to intercept balls and retain and recycle possession for Stumptown. And in that in that situation, another one of those kind of lateral movements set up that interception from McGrath. and. You've got another chance, potentially. Well, they're sacrificing him here because he is going up inside the box. Garcia Sosa will be the one to take it. And his deliveries have been good, so we'll see if he can put one on the nose, though. Garcia Sosa floating it up there. Good header. Oof. A little bit too much there. I like the idea. I like Bay Kurtz running in on goal, but Gomez doing a nice job just gathering it up. And Kurt scored one off of a cross situation for the winner earlier this year. I think Garcia Sosa himself crossed it in for him. Rebe wins the header there, and Cheney 
Well, not able to uh, gather that one. Long ball. Carpe knows he's offside, so he doesn't go for it. Here comes Stumptown taking it back. Hines. Hines to Navia. Navia finding Carpe. That's a great through ball. Garcia Sosa. He's going to whip this in. Garcia Sosa. Gomez sure hands right there, catching it. You'd like to see just one more number in the box try to get a little flick header in there. Maybe it was just a little bit too much, and Garcia, excuse me, Gomez able to snatch it up. Again, another enticing ball from Garcia Sosa. It looked like he wanted to bend it a little wider, instead found its way to Gomez, but I'm, I'm liking the opportunities. They just, they just need to find that final ball spot on here in the last few minutes. We got a sub for LA Force. I believe this is the last one. It's going to be the defender Clem adding some nice uh, reinforcements in back. Not in yet. It's the LA Force have it. The far side, Vion. Vion. And passing it back. Martinez, good, strong header there. Here's Navia. Navia now sending it forward to no one. LA Force uh, playing a little bit of kickball right here. Stumptown takes it. That is Bay Kurtz. No, now it's Bay Kurtz. Bay Kurtz with Hines coming on the outside. And he goes to Hines. Back to Kurtz. Kurtz, what does he do with it? He whips it in. That's a great ball. Headed through the middle. But Gomez sure handed again. That was an incredible ball from Baker. That was great. That was great. If he could have just headed it just slightly back to get on to Carpe. Not, uh, not blaming Williams there. That would have been a tough ball, and that's a foul. Cheney with the yellow card there. Anytime you foul the birthday boy, you're uh, in risk of getting a card. He won't be getting a piece of the birthday cake. No. <laughs> But yeah, I agree with your point. I think Williams just needs to steer that one a bit closer to Carpe, and you can tell he's a bit frustrated with himself. But overall, again, it's an impressive game in the buildup as we see this change. So we got the sub coming in. That is going to be Clem. As I heard earlier in the uh, broadcast, he did score during the Legends Cup. And he will be coming in for the big man up top, Christian Chaney. Christian Chaney on his LA Force debut, scoring early on in the 12th minute. And again, very impressed by how Cheney handled himself in the first. I think in the second, the game wasn't exactly built uh, for him to kind of do, be holding up and kind of leading the line, especially with LA Force under so much pressure. Clem coming right in and grabbing the other sub for Stumptown. Ball whipped in. Uh, catching practice for Gomez here in the second half. Credit to him, he's done well. And that is, uh, well, I was going to call it an errant punt, but it does find his man, Stumptown. Nope, LA Force still with it. And Jersey Tug there. Easy call there for Stumptown. Just four minutes of stoppage time. If you're Stumptown, you got to go. Throw the kitchen sink in. It doesn't matter if you lose 1 0, 2 0. You want to find that equalizer. Carpe. Calling the handball. Ooh, that's a tough call. Tough call for Carpe right there. Yeah, I thought they were going to call him for some sort of uh, shove or elbow in the holdup. <laughs> they yeah, got him on no. a handball. You know, every time that there's a foul or a stoppage of play, okay, let's walk to the ball. All right, let's pick it up. Let's spin it around. Okay, is it in the right spot? Let me tie my shoe. Let's get some water off the okay, ball. It's yep. a little dirty. Yep. Uh, Coach, what do you want me to do? Okay, I'll walk over here. Of course, not making fun of LA Force there. Everyone does that. It, it, it's it's called effective gamesmanship. It's like when you're winning, it's called you burn something. Clock. <laughs> LA Force taking it to the corner smartly. Winning the goal kick, Gonzalez. I like the uh, the intensity. He's moving fast. He knows. It's gonna be Krim taking it up. Krim, sending in the ball. It's got to be a little bit higher, but Garcia Sosa is going to run onto it. Back to Hines. Hines trying to find 
Uh, finds Navia. Navia, not the ball he wanted. But he gets it back. Goes to Garcia Sosa. At some point, you just got to start whipping it in. Absolutely. You just got to put as much pressure on the opposing penalty area as possible, especially because we don't know how many minutes it passed in stoppage time. It's just kind of frozen on the, mm -hmm. on the scoreboard. Garcia Sosa, nope. Hines. Hines finding Bay Kurtz. Kurtz. He's going to whip this one in. It's high. And Gomez collides with his teammate, holds on to the ball. Credit to Gomez. We talk about his instincts. They've been great all day. He's been very decisive. I think Robert mentioned it actually earlier. Just he knows exactly what to do. He doesn't hesitate. When the ball's anywhere near him, it's going to be his. He's like a tight end on a jump ball. Well, you know, when you're a keeper in that, in that position, you have a split-second decision. Okay, do I go for it? Or do I hold my line and go for the block? And if you're wrong, and if you hesitate, that ball is probably going to end up in the back of the net. He hasn't been wrong all night long. You look at the stat sheet. He's not gonna. It's not gonna be filled with saves, but he's uh, he's done his his job today, just catching the ball and and making sure there's no easy rebounds for Stumptown to hop on. I know we certainly hope he's all right. It looks like he came off a bit worse for wear in that collision, so hopefully he gets up and everything's good to continue. But right now they're just attending to him. Still trying to uh, figure out what's going on here. Gomez, he uh, looks like he's all right. A little sip of water. You see Vion just absolutely instructing his team here, trying to get everything organized. And that's a, a point we haven't talked about much, just the discrepancy in age and experience between these two sides. you got a lot of guys over 30, and some people might say, oh, they're over the hump. That's not necessarily true. A lot of these guys are still players. Vion, 31, still maybe on the back end of his prime leading this side very well, making sure everyone's composed in these closing minutes. Oh, God, I hope Dirty's not over the hump. I'm about to hit that next month. Quick restart for Stumptown. Navia, he's knocked down. Martinez. Martinez, Gonzo. What does he do with it? Goes to Navia. Now the numbers are going forward. Who's going to be the one to whip it in? Krim. It's going to be Krim. He crosses the field, but... Ooh, Williams. Good chest there. Garcia Sosa. Back to Martinez. Martinez to Navi. Stumptown. Not the pass he wanted right there, but Krim will get it right back. Just got to keep pounding it in at this point. That's a good ball. Here comes Gomez. That's a good thunderous punt right there, right into the corner too. It, it's smart decision. When it's booted as far as possible away from danger in the closing moments, when everyone's encouraging the refs to run clock, every waning second is going to be yelled with encouragement to blow the whistle. Navia to Bay Kurtz. Bay, what does he do with it? Kurtz. Martinez. Martinez taking it up. Martinez. Whipping it in. Kurtz not able to find it. Kurtz whipping it in. Screen shouts of handball from the peanut gallery. And that is going to do it. LA Force taking it 1-0 over Stumptown AC. Stumptown drops to 1-1 one one on the spring season. LA Force improved to 1-1 one one on the season. Huge three points for the force, and after a dominant first half, Stump with Stumptown really controlling it, you see the strength, the resilience from the visitors. On the road in the home opener, the first ever home game for Stumptown, they managed to cling on for dear life and and make sure they prevent any damaging chances from coming on goal. I've seen a lot of road teams uh, win their first game here. I mean, you have... LAFC winning their first road game of the year. We saw Stumptown winning on the road. We saw San Diego winning on the road. So hometown advantage, not quite there early on in Nisa. 
Yeah, of course, and also with limited fans uh, due to COVID protocols, I'm sure that would factor in. But again, life slowly maybe returning to fuller capacity at these stadiums. So that's a trend to certainly watch out for. Well, if we were to pick a player of the game, it's hard to go against the goal scorer right now. Christian Cheney, first game for LA Force, his debut, and able to get the nice tap in right there and the nice backflip to add into it. Absolutely. Elite goal, elite celebration, and a big victory for the LA Force. You can't really complain. Um, if you're Cheney, a very impressive debut. A big a big time credit to him as well, because obviously the second half a bit more frustrating for him, but he keeps his head in the game. He maybe acts more as a, a lone target man, just trying to burn seconds here or there. It all adds up, and they would get this 1-0 win. I think if we were to give a uh, honorable mention, I'll throw it to the keeper, Gomez. Again, not a ton of saves, but he was able to handle himself real well on these crosses. He came out every time. He caught it every time. He never gave up any rebounds. And he just made it frustrating for Stumptown. Yeah, the key is he was decisive. And Robert mentioned it. You've mentioned it. I've alluded to it as well. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's not hesitating. He's making sure he's locked in on just making the best decision possible. And sometimes you get it wrong. Sometimes things don't go your way. Tonight wasn't one of those nights for him. He was just fully ready to go the second he stepped foot on the field tonight. Well, there are losses that are pretty demoralizing, and you have to really think about it. And then there's tonight for Stumptown. How do you describe tonight's loss? How are you supposed to feel after this one? I don't think you could be that demoralized after that second half I mean it was certainly a better performance but at the end of the day they still didn't have that many opportunities against Gomez so how would you assess this one look I think you have to look at the first half and the second half and maybe put them on their own separate islands I think the first half obviously is very frustrating like and that's the reason you ultimately lost tonight was the fact that you went down and you didn't really orchestrate much to put pressure on the force in the first but in the second, you got to give them credit the way they built up into it. You can't be kicking yourself too badly with the number of chances you created. It's just about creating that decisive chance, playing that final ball a little better. Maybe in training you work on just um, more situations where you're attacking a bit through the middle instead of out wide um, to diversify your attacks a bit more. Because when you're crossing, teams know what to expect. The keeper can be ready for it. you got to play the chess match a bit, a bit more. It just seemed like that final pass. Just wasn't there for them tonight. And you'll have that. You know, Williams, Ward, um, Garcia Sosa, we all agree that they, they, they stepped up more in that second half, but they still were not able to find that surgical pass inside the box for either uh, Carpe or another one to hop onto and slot at home. But, you know, promising signs, uh, at least from the midfield, for stepping up in that second half and playing a little bit better. Absolutely. And I think that... Uh, you can't, like I said, you can't kick yourself too much for this one. You got a big match next on Friday against New Amsterdam FC, who have already beaten this year. You've already put one pass, so maybe that'll allow you to build to your confidence as well. And you've got a lot of talent, a lot of ability. Um, maybe, maybe just some more finishing drills and training, and they'll be all ready to go. Maybe some good final ball drills. It's just about those last few details. Maybe they would have clicked a bit more if they got into the game a bit earlier as well. You never know. Sometimes you just have that night when it's just not clicking. And you know what? It happens to everyone. It happens to Stumptown. It happens to the best teams. So we'll hope that uh, they do a little bit more clinical in the, uh, the next games upcoming. I'm glad that you mentioned their one coming up against, uh, what is it, New Amsterdam. New Amsterdam. This should be a good one because they did uh, meet up in the Legends Cup. And as you alluded to earlier, Stumptown was able to get that win. Yes, and I, I was a 1-0. Kurtz scored the winner, and we saw Kurtz make his impact here in the second as well. So I think he's going to be a big piece for them in that game. Maybe they'll give him more minutes due to his success. But if I'm Stumptown, again, this is a, it's a game you don't forget the lessons you learn from it, but in terms of the mistakes. it's it, wait, How you mentioned, amnesia about the bad stuff, you remember the good stuff. Well, you got anything else to add? No, I think that ultimately it's a solid performance uh, from the visitors. I think it was very uh, strategic and clinical in the second half, and that's ultimately what's going to do it. You see Coach Peterson's developmental skills kind of taking effect and the force bouncing back for a massive win here. Yeah, you know, you, the force, talking about last year in the uh, fall championship tournament, they made it all the way to the semifinal before losing to uh, the hosts and eventual champions, Detroit City. And then this year... It's a little bit of a slower start for them. 
They did not get off to the start they wanted in the Legends Cup. Only one win and two losses, and they lost their home opener last week. So they, it looks like they are back on track for this one. All right, I'm Danny Trevor alongside Sam and alongside our, ma our man Robert. Robert, thank you for that. Robert, I'm sorry. I, I knew you were here. <laughs> All right, well, from the Sportsplex at Matthews, I'm Danny Trevor. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you next time.